The Denver Broncos made a couple of roster moves on Tuesday and Wednesday. How might this impact the Broncos personnel decisions this Sunday against the Las Vegas Raiders? Plus, we cross it over with your boy Q, host of the Lockdown Raiders podcast, as we preview this matchup from both sides of the coin. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back here to a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos. It is crossover week here on the Lockdown NFL Network. Can't wait to talk with your boy Q to preview the Broncos and Raiders. But in the meantime, from the South Stands to the end zone, I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke. I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Sarah, great to see you here once again, my friend. And obviously, thank you to Broncos country for making Lockdown Broncos their first listen of the day. Some personnel moves here by the Broncos. Broncos early on in this week has us thinking about, hey, what's going to happen in these final three games? I know. Thankfully, right, the Broncos are not in the same boat as a lot of other teams in the league. I mean, uh, we saw how badly COVID affected the Broncos last season. I'm thankful that this year it's kind of been mild, at least compared to what we've seen for some other teams. I mean, some other teams are, are having to put together some like backup rosters right now. So thankfully for the Broncos, it's been minimal. And, and thankfully, going into this game, you know, it, it's still minimal. It remains minimal. But obviously, some changes that need to be talked about. One of Drew Locke's buddies going on IR. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, and, and Andrew Beck, too. That That's a great point that you bring up about him going to IR. You know, noticeably last week against the Cincinnati Bengals, he had a big brace on his elbow. So he's been playing through an elbow injury. And I guess it's at the point now where, you know, he's probably, I don't know if he's going to have to get surgery on it, but he's going to go on IR because the injury obviously flared up. So that means he's done for the season. IR is usually a three week appearance in general at minimum. And obviously, there's only three weeks left in the regular season. So Beck's season is done for the Broncos. I think he's been super reliable. As a guy that's been a blocker, but the Broncos, I feel like the amount of times that they bring him in as a wing or a fullback, I feel like it's just been as inconsistent as their offense. But it does beg the question now, with Drew Locke getting the start against this Las Vegas Raiders team that loves to send pressure with Yannick Ngakwe, you have Max Crosby. It's been an issue that the Broncos had in the last matchup. You're going to hear that from Q a little bit later on as to maybe what they're going to do. You have to wonder if we're going to see a little bit more of Eric Sauber. And, and I wanted to pinpoint, you made, you made a great point on this as well. This offseason, Drew Locke and Eric Sauber, they threw together every day. They got together on throw sessions. He, Albert Okwebunam, and Eric Sauber, those guys all got together. So I think maybe having that chemistry with one another will help out. But could we see a lot more Eric Sauber in an elevated role? I mean, it's been inconsistent the amount of times we've seen him. But when he's been on the field, he's had a positive impact for the team. Definitely, definitely. Especially when you talk about the way that this game went last time around, you know, with Teddy Bridgewater at the quarterback position, it was one sack after another off the edge for Max Crosby. And as we're going to find out, you know, he hasn't had a sack since then. So and just a, a little spoiler alert there, but Eric Sauber can really help out in that regard. I feel like that was something I remember noticing from him in preseason play when Drew Locke was at the quarterback position, Cody, is how well he did hanging in there as in terms of just chipping edge guys. And then if he got a release or if he just kind of stayed in there, he did a really good job with that. And he's proven himself to me as a blocker. So I would love to see what he can do with a more expanded role. I think Eric Sauber is a guy that a lot of Bronco fans kind of sleep on because he does a lot of the dirty work. He, he does a lot of special team stuff. He does a lot of blocking. He did that touchdown pass against the Los Angeles Chargers to help win that game. So maybe more opportunities coming his way. Not that Andrew Beck was heavily, heavily involved in the offense. Even as a blocker, it was pretty minimal in terms of just his overall usage. But at the same time, the Broncos are going to need to run the ball against this Raiders run defense to win this game. They're going to need to run a lot. And Eric Saubert is a guy that they can do that with. Gives them a really good chance, too. And the Broncos also have one of my favorite guys that are on the roster, just a, a hardworking player, and Demaria Crockett, who's done a fantastic job for the team this season, filling in, obviously being another running back option. Really loved what we saw from him in the preseason. But the reason they did that, Boone is back, baby. Mike Boone activated off the COVID reserve list. Obviously, some good news for the Broncos there, as you're mentioning. A lot of outbreaks happened. The Kansas City Chiefs being impacted. Now the Buffalo Bills starting to get a little bit more right there. And apparently there's some really strong implications. Like if the Patriots beat the Bills this week and the Broncos went out, 
apparently the statistic according to 538, the Broncos have a 98% chance to make the playoffs, which right now, I mean, we're thinking like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it doesn't feel that way, right? It feels like it's already a foregone conclusion or done. But until the math says that they're officially out, I guess there's always the possibility. But obviously, you know, maybe the Broncos get Mike Boone a little bit more acclimated. Maybe you go with a three-headed running back rushing attack against the Raiders because the last time that actually happened, we saw Mike Boone, saw Melvin Gordon, and we also saw Javante Williams. Uh, guess who? Against the Raiders. We saw all three of them. So, you know what? I'm not uh, I'm not opposed to it here this week when the Broncos have to travel on the road to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. But, ladies and gentlemen, coming up here in just a moment, Sarah and myself, we're going to sit down with your boy Q, one of our favorite people here on the Locked On Network, to sit down and talk about two opposing teams that absolutely despise each other. We love Q, and Q loves Broncos country. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's good friends over there, Stat Hero. And no one plays daily fantasy sports to lose, and winning feels so much better. But traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against. Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it's you versus the house in head-to-head fantasy matchups, win or take all. And here's the crazy part, Stat Hero, they show you their lineups before you play, and you handpick the team that you want to face one-on-one. This never-before-seen innovation of fantasy sports and a sports betting hybrid has Stat Hero players clocking odds that are over four times better why because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns stat hero puts you in control of your fate so sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on use promo code locked on that's one word for a 100 deposit match that's stathero.com slash locked on use promo code locked on for a 100 match stathero.com slash locked on promo code locked on terms and conditions apply Crossover Thursday around the Locked On NFL Network. It's an AFC West crossover episode. We get three of them in a row here, fortunate enough, on our end. I'm Cody Work of Locked On Broncos. My co-host is Sarah Bender, and we're joined by our favorite AFC West Raiders guy in the entire universe. That is your boy Q, host of the Lockdown Raiders podcast. And Q, I will say this: Broncos country loves you. So even though that you cover the Raiders, so they I'm love you. Does. <laughs> Bang! I know. I we were just talking about our Twitter mentions before we went on air. We get fans that are you know get pissed at us for pointing out facts. I see you get that in the same regard yeah. in Raiders Nation. But man, it's great to have you here once again. Great to talk with you. Oh, yeah, man. It's great. Always leading up to another game. AFC West matchups are always fun, no matter what the, uh, you know, the record is. It's always, you know, the Broncos, Raiders, you know, Raiders and Chiefs, Raiders and Chargers, Broncos. And Ch- I mean, it's just it's fun in the AFC West. And this year it's been uh, wild and crazy and everyone's still in the mix. So it makes it for a lot more fun. So, yeah, man, always glad to uh, join you guys on the show. Absolutely. Well, let's kick things off. And Sarah, I'll let you start things off, my friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Cody. Now, sorry for jumping in a little quick there, but uh, Q, it's great to meet you. First of all, I know from just our our quick conversation before the show started how much you love Tyler Huntley and how you'd love to have him on the Raiders at some point. So. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm just I messing. Poke the bear now, man. I'm gonna have to duck and dodge for the holidays. Like I'm, man, I'm telling you, Raider Nation is gonna come after me. I'll tell you what. I thought Tyler Huntley played a hell of a game on a Sunday against the Packers, gave him an opportunity to win that game. Uh, and my mistake is I actually shouted him out on Twitter, and all of a sudden it, it, it made all the pitchforks come after me. But uh, <laughs> shout-out to Tyler Huntley anyway. He deserves a little shout-out for a guy who went undrafted and ended up being a backup there in Baltimore. Uh, he does. Well, you he know, does. killed my yeah. killed my topic idea of having Tyler Huntley to Denver conversations for sure. I mean, I <laughs> I, I was blown away by it as well. He, he's a blur. He's fast, and uh, he looked like a little bit more of an accurate passer than Lamar Jackson. But, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't a Baltimore Ravens show. You can listen to our good right. friends over there, Locked On Ravens, for that cue. Uh, you know, starting things off here. This matchup on Sunday, it's a short week for this Las Vegas Raiders team coming off of a win on a weird Monday doubleheader. They're supposed to play Saturday last week. Obviously, COVID situation impacted the Cleveland Browns, so they had to move the game. But they still came out, and and they won it on a last-second field goal. And now both teams, the Broncos, the Raiders, they sit at 7-7. and Still in the playoff hunt, but you know, is there any optimism about where the Raiders are right now in terms of where Raiders Nation is thinking, sitting at 7-7? What are your optics on maybe the team trying to compete for a playoff spot? Well, you know, I I would still – 
consider them a team that is obviously in the playoff mix, but you've got to win some games back to back. You know what I mean? You've got to be consistent with some winning because if you get to the playoffs, that's what it's about, right? It's going on a winning streak and you got to get hot at the right time. And for the Raiders, ever since the bye week, they've only won two games. They went into the bye at five and two. Now they're sitting there at seven and seven. So the in- the, the inconsistency is what's going to hold them back, in my opinion. The offense just can't really get cooking like it should. I mean, Monday night against the Browns, the defense did their job and the offense went out there multiple times. After the first drive, the very first drive, they score a touchdown. They don't score another touchdown the rest of the game. You know, so that, that they just have to figure out a way to get consistent offensively, and the defense is, is holding its own, giving them chances. But uh, if, if they win on Sunday and they actually put back-to-back wins together, okay, maybe we have that conversation about running the table. But I can it's hard for me to say they're going to win four in a row when they can't win two in a row. I feel like, man, I feel like we could do an entire Broncos show on just that exact same thing. That's exactly what the Broncos are at this point. It's like one week they're, they're destroying the Dallas Cowboys, and next week they're getting destroyed by the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't get it, Q. Right. So I'm with you. I think it's going to be kind of a you know unstoppable force meets immovable object in that regard this weekend of like what's going to give you know in this game. And I think for me, from just watching the Raiders this season, you know, I, I wonder like what is this team's identity and since everything's gone down off the field you know all the different things that happened a couple months ago like what would you say is kind of the mo of this Raiders team what's the identity of this Raiders team right now you know it's funny I've been trying to figure out the identity all year I mean I really have and uh, at one point uh, under the John Gruden era they were a run first team they were you know they want to smash mouth and then they they want to open it up you know and the run was going to set up the pass but the run game has been terrible this year I mean Josh Jacobs hasn't gone over 100 yards once this season you know and that that tells you really all you need to know uh, they they had I think 98 yards on Monday against the Browns and, and that was a good game for him rushing and that's that's a problem you know so uh, I would say that it's about the pass setting up the run but then you haven't had Darren Waller for multiple weeks now. So is Darren Waller going to be there? He's your number one target. Henry Ruggs obviously is not there because of the tragedy that happened. So now you're looking at guys like Zay Jones, Deshaun Jackson, who just has been brought in. Is he going to step up? He's been inconsistent. You know, Hunter Renfro, he's been consistent, but you don't think that he doesn't strike fear into you. He's not the guy that, oh, man, Hunter Renfro is going to beat us. And, I ain't uh, punning know, to him, Q. But he, right, but, he's, <laughs> but he plays good ball. I like him a lot, but he, he plays good ball. But, I mean, he's not a guy that – just strikes fear into you. So um, I, I don't know. You know, I think Darren Waller, if he could return, would be great. It would really help out Derek Carr. That's his go-to guy. I'm just not convinced that he's coming back. You know, he's got an IT strain of the uh, of his knee, and apparently that's multiple weeks, and it's just really based off of how flexible you can be. And he's not going to jeopardize his long-term, you know, career for what may be a meaningless game. Not saying it's meaningless, but it could end up being a meaningless game. So I think that he's going to make sure that he's healthy before he returns, and uh, that could be a big blow to to the Raiders. And on top of that, their offensive line hasn't been consistent either, so uh, pass blocking's been a problem. Actually, one of their best games they played was right after the Gruden situation. They went to Denver and played the Broncos. That was one of their better <laughs> games, you know, but that, again, was before the bye week. And then they played Philadelphia, played a really good game against Philadelphia, again, before the bye week. Ever since the bye week, it's been so inconsistent. It hasn't been very good at all. Coming into this matchup against the Denver Broncos, the last time these two teams played, I'm looking at the defensive line against Bro- the Broncos' offensive line. Last time these two teams played, Max Crosby had three sacks. And Yannick Ngakwe, they just made the Broncos' offensive flow miserable in that last matchup. They've been fun to watch so far this season. Denver's offensive line is coming off a game where they struggled against Trey Hendrickson and just the size there. So I think that this bodes well maybe for where the Raiders have the advantage in terms of maybe just that a appeal there especially with the size on the outside in your opinion what has been the tone of the defense so far since the bye week I mean obviously there's been good moments there's been bad moments but I feel like they've probably been the better unit of the entire team oh no doubt I I I say that the Raiders have seven wins this season because the defense has been solid you know they've been good enough they haven't been great they're not lights out but they've been good enough you know they give the Raiders opportunities and you know it's funny you mentioned Max Crosby having three sacks against the Broncos that was the last time he had a sack this season you know I mean he he's had He's had five sacks so far this season. He just earned his first Pro Bowl. He's got a ton of pressures. Don't get me wrong. And pressures are great. But literally the last time he got a sack was against the Denver Broncos when he had that three-sack performance. So I'm sure he's licking his chops. He's getting excited about, (laughs) you know, the possibility of actually registering another sack in Gakwe. uh, Same thing. I mean, he's been, you know, getting getting home. He has uh, nine sacks to lead the team. But – uh, I think that they both feel like that they could dominate in this game. And so uh, I like what the defensive line has been able to do with the front four. They haven't had to blitz very often to get home. And 
the linebackers have played pretty well. You know, they, they're actually getting better. Divine Diablo, that's a name that I'll tell you to yep. look out for. Uh, the rookie out of uh, Virginia Tech. He was a guy that was a safety, converted to linebacker. He's getting more and more burn each and every game. Corey Littleton was a big-time free agent that the Raiders picked up a couple seasons ago from the Rams. He played five snaps on Monday against the Browns because the rookie, Divine Diablo, was in there getting the majority of the snaps. We're right? going to dive a little bit deeper into this matchup, ladies and gentlemen. Broncos country, Raiders nation. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, Lockdown Raiders crossover. So it's a good friends over there on location. And Super Bowl 56 is at SoFi Stadium in less than 100 days. And on location, the official hospitality partner of the National Football League. It is the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. You get to select your exact seats, and you get to choose from elite experiences featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with NFL legends, you get to choose from five-star LA hotels, and you get to eat food that's been chefed up by the great Wolfgang Puck, and you can visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information, or you can search Super Bowl on location. That's onlocationexp.com slash SB56, or search Super Bowl on location. And our good friends over there, betonline.ag, and BetOnline has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season, you can head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. When you use promo code LOCKDOWN, that's one word LOCKDOWN, from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, so don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. BetOnline, where the game starts. Q. I'm going to hand the ball off to you like Derek Carr to Josh Jacobs, my friend. Well, I'll take the handoff, and I hopefully I average more than three yards a carry. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of some first downs and some touchdowns. But, hey, we, you know, it is what it is. So, fellas, as we get into this week uh, 16 action now, uh, the Denver Broncos come into town, and the, the Raiders got a victory in Denver. You know, it's coming off the Gruden issues, and uh, I thought that was a pretty impressive win. That was the first one in the Rich Passaccia era, and, uh, you know, it was some it was some good and some positive that the Raiders needed. Well, now we fast forward to where we are week 16. Both teams come in at 7-7. Seven and seven. So, uh, Cody, as far as Denver goes and the quarterback situation, Teddy B goes out with a concussion on Sunday. Most likely, uh, Drew Locke's going to be the guy, or maybe he's already been ruled the guy. But how does the offensive approach change when it goes from Teddy Bridgewater to Drew Locke? Well, this is something that Sarah and I were talking about this week here on Lockdown Broncos. With Teddy Bridgewater, you're not going to get the you know the shots downfield consistently. You're not going to target your wide receivers in a way that Derek Carr would normally target his guys. But I think for where Drew Locke is at, it gives you the ability to test the ball downfield because you just locked up guys like Tim Patrick, Corlin Sutton to some long-term deals here. But their average depth of target has dropped significantly, and that's due to Teddy Bridgewater being the quarterback. And not a knock against Teddy. He's just not that guy that's going to take the shots downfield. He'll take a couple shots but usually it's inconsistent. He misses them. He underthrows it, overthrows it, or just throws it out of bounds. And so for what we saw Drew Locke do when he came in, he just threw a ball up and Tim Patrick went and got it and made a play against the Cincinnati Bengals defensive back. So with that, it a lot, it forces the defense, I think, to respect what you can do. The defense have been playing Denver to really stop the run because they know that Denver has been inconsistent as a passing team. Now with Drew Locke, you have a chance to throw it and air it out a lot more, which I think expands your playbook. It forces the defensive line to spread out a little bit, and that's where you can start running the ball with guys like Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. Well, Sarah, how, how far, uh, or not how far, but how concerned are you with the way that Drew Locke will give the opportunity and multiple opportunities? I mean, he throws the ball up there, but he'll give multiple opportunities, as we saw the last time he played the Raiders, uh, to, to turn the ball over and create turnovers. How concerned are you with that kind of gunslinger mentality? You know, th I think there's a definite concern there, right? I mean, anybody in Broncos country would be lying if they said, oh, yeah, no, Drew's going to be just, he's going to go out there and just absolutely kill it. You know, I think that that game in Las Vegas last year was probably the worst we've ever seen Drew Locke, which, of course, like, that's kind of how he gets judged by Broncos country, the worst performance that he ever had at, with the team. That's kind of what everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people expect from him now. It's like, oh, every every drop back, he's either going to fumble or he's going to throw an interception. Every time the ball's in the air, it's like you're holding your breath for a split second. Like, <laughs> wh where's that ball going to go on the other side of this frame? So, 
th- there's definite concern there. I'm a huge Drew Locke fan, Q. I love okay. Drew Locke. I loved him coming out of college. I was so excited when the Broncos got him in round two. Couldn't believe he lasted there, especially when Daniel Jones was going six overall. So I, I was excited that the Broncos got him. And then that first handful of games, I'm like, dang, like they might have a steal on their hands. It just it, it hasn't been a seamless transition with him and Pat Shermer calling the plays. Now there's a run game in Denver that Drew really hasn't had in his time there. It was a really consistent running game in 2020. Right now, the Broncos are running the ball so well that it's kind of hard for the quarterback to screw things up. And even though he had that terrible fumble against the Bengals, the offense looked way better, honestly, when Drew came in this past time, as opposed to the previous time that he got on the field against the Chargers, when when he just looked like he wasn't prepared. He looked like he almost didn't know what to do. Then against the Bengals, the offense was really humming. Two straight drives that got, you know, one a touchdown, one inside the 10-yard line, and then that obviously that fumble that happened. But he, I don't know, it, it's it's just one of those things. It's like, are you going to get good Drew this week or are you going right. to get Las Vegas <laughs> Raiders Drew this week? For him to take that next step now that he looks like he's in the driver's seat again, I mean, I guess that the Broncos at some point need to make a decision on what they're going to do permanently with their quarterback position. But for right now, it's only a handful of games left. What does he have to do to take that next step and show some consistency and be that leader offensively? Identifying when to get the football out. Some of his things, too, like he he was sacked several times in, in games that he's gotten in. And as Sarah mentioned, there was a fumble there. Well, he got in early on this year against the Baltimore Ravens. And I believe one of his plays, he, he had a turnover. And then against the Chargers, he threw an interception. It was just a very poor decision when he should have just thrown it out of bounds. One of his first plays, he carried it, tried to run upfield. The ball gets popped out. Luckily, Tim Patrick recovered it. So just protect the football. You don't have to do too much with Drew, but you can open things up. Right? You know, you can start off this game, I think, by trying to run the football, and then you can start blending in more play action, getting Jerry Judy on crossing patterns. I don't think that you need to put the entire game necessarily if you're Pat Schirmer or this coaching staff on Drew Locke's shoulders, but having him being able to throw the ball downfield, I think you can expand your playbook a little bit more. You are just going to be going with a little bit of a riskier option because you're going with a guy, as Sarah said, who loves to take chances, who loves to try to fit the ball into tight windows and sometimes doesn't see a safety coming down, sometimes doesn't see the inside linebacker lurking in the underneath hook curl and, and eyeing it. So he's got to get better with some of his fundamentals here. But this is a great opportunity for him to continue to improve. Now, while he's not going to be the long-term guy in Denver, you know what? Maybe if he continues to play well and develop, maybe he could be your backup. You know, regardless, I know the Broncos are going to make a run at a quarterback this offseason, whether it be Russell Wilson, whether it be Aaron Rodgers are going to try to get one of those guys and if you can get a guy like that I think maybe you can keep Drew up as a backup or you can use him in in terms of a trade package but he's still under contract with the team and so you need to do whatever you can I think in my opinion if I was in control you don't want to waste a round two guy even though he's probably not going to be your guy I just think with how, how things have gone in Denver not all of it's entirely his fault but he definitely has a lot of issues and fundamental things in his game he has to fix and correct and who knows in three games you have a chance to kind of make a little bit of a positive remark on the end of the season. Now, I know just because it's on Twitter doesn't mean it's facts, but, uh, you know, as I was watching a little bit of uh, the Denver Bengals game and then I was kind of checking in with Twitter as well, it was funny because on Sunday uh, without the Raiders playing, I kind of was able to scatter shoot around the league and everything, check out some games. I saw a lot of people talking about Jerry Judy's being wasted in Denver. What exactly does that mean? And Is there any kind of any kind of um, I don't want to say truth to that, but uh, do you understand where anybody's coming from when they say that? It's so sad, Q. It's so sad to watch, and I hope you don't get to see it this weekend because it's embarrassing for all of us. You know, there was a game last year against the New Orleans Saints. I don't know if you heard about it where Kendall Hinton played the quarterback position, and Jerry Judy famously tweeted out, well, at least I got my conditioning in. I, I mean, he's been relegated to a guy who gets his conditioning in on a week-to-week basis. You know, like in old-school basketball where you have that one player who just runs back and forth on the baseline? Yep. That's yep. Jerry Judy on the Broncos' offense. Wow. He runs in motion on every single play pretty much, and they never get him the ball. I mean, he had four targets in this last game against the Bengals, but they don't ever try to get him involved on any sort of jet sweeps. They don't do anything with getting him. The, I mean, they 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 use that pre-snap motion, like Cody said in a previous episode that we did, as window dressing. It means yeah. absolutely nothing ultimately. And frankly, Jerry Judy's the type of guy that I feel like you need to be getting him ten targets every single game. He's so di- he's the he's the most dynamic playmaker the Broncos have offensively. And he's the guy who runs in motion on every single play. And, and occasionally they'll swap him out for the punt returner, who's the worst, you know, worst offensive weapon in the arsenal. So, 
it, it's a real shame. I, I honestly hope that you don't get to see it. The rumors and the things that you read on Twitter, that is accurate. That's it's absolutely right. accurate. It's not just people being like, this is so annoying. I'm, I'm going to overreact on Twitter. That's right. an accurate assessment of how Jerry Judy has been used. I think that the Broncos are blessed to get him in the draft. Uh, Alabama roll tide. Say what you want to say. I don't care. He's my dude. Uh, just talk to me, man. How great has he been this season for the Broncos? He's been everything that everyone thought he was coming out of Alabama and then some. I mean, he's been a superstar. I would say I think a lot of people are saying it's too early to say top this, top that. I would say top 10 for sure, if not better, at the cornerback position. I mean, we just saw exhibit A of that this past week against the Cincinnati Bengals when I don't know if, if you have Jamar Chase in fantasy or not, but Patrick Sertan erased him from the game. And yeah, you don't yeah. really see a lot of guys doing that these days in the NFL anymore, just completely taking a wide receiver out of the game. And, of course, there's help over the top and things like that. You can't just credit just Sertan. But at the same time, the, the sample size is big enough now at this point that we can accurately say that this guy is a, a superstar cornerback in the NFL. And and George Payton has called him a franchise cornerback. Even wow. before he even played a, hardly any games at all, he was saying it's harder to find franchise cornerbacks than it is quarterbacks these days just because of all the quarterback movement around the league. Guys coming out of college like Herbert and Mahomes who have been so good right away. And, and there's not a lot of Patrick Sertans who are coming into the league and just being absolutely dominant corners from day one. But he's been a real game changer for the Broncos defense. Four interceptions already this season. It's a a game changing play, obviously, against the Los Angeles Chargers. Right. And really just a big reason why the defense is number two in the NFL in points allowed this season. Before we wrap this up, I did want to know if there's a weak spot in that defense, if there's something that the Raiders could do to try to exploit it on Sunday and try to get an advantage, where would you say that that is? I think it's right now it's up on the defensive front, right, Cody? I, I think the yeah. Broncos defensive line with Draymond Jones missing this game against the Bengals, they actually played pretty well against the run, all things considered. Like you said, too, the linebacker position group has kind of been depleted a little bit, but the Broncos have guys that are really stepping up two really crazy athletes in Baron Browning and Jonas Griffith yeah. who are on the RAS scale I mean they are off the charts so it's nice to have that athleticism those guys still have to go out there and make the plays and that defensive front you know Bradley Chubb is kind of making his way back to full health we're starting to see some more explosiveness from him but the weakness for the Broncos is kind of on the edge opposite opposite Bradley Chubb you know when Jonathan Cooper is kind of rotating in and out and then I would say on the defensive interior where you're rotating a lot of guys that they might not necessarily – their names might not necessarily be recognizable to Raiders fans other than maybe Shelby Harris. So – it's 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 a lot of just group effort. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I Sorry. I had to bring that up. I, I, I have space on that one. But um, but honestly, that's where it is. It's it's kind of been hit or miss throughout the season where the Broncos will give up some really big games on the ground as well. And then the next week, they'll just be dominant. So it's kind of like a like with the quarterback position, you almost don't know which version of the run defense you're going to get. Uh, good stuff, man. I think it's going to be a great game on uh, on Sunday. It's an AFC West matchup. They're both seven and seven. I mean, you can't really ask for too much more. It's it's you know it'll be after Christmas and both teams are still in the mix. <laughs> you yeah. know, so, no. uh, it, it should be fun, man. Definitely appreciate uh, joining the show and you guys joining the show as well. Ah, uh, you're our boy Q. We always love and appreciate your insight, and, and you always have a an invite, my friend, to anything Broncos country. You are in and Broncos country. I'm giving Q a pass, even though he covers the Raiders. He gets in everywhere for free in Broncos country. We appreciate you, Q, so much. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, hey, just send Patrick Sertan over to Las nah. Vegas. He don't need Denver, man. But Vegas is a lot of fun. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> that's the one that's non-negotiable, Q. But, okay. Yeah, you know, as right. always. I, when I was doing good, I thought I could try to sneak one in, and maybe you just let it go. I just guess not. <laughs> Broncos country won't let you live that one down, right. Q. But, I'm not that cool, right? <laughs> but Broncos country, we appreciate you. Raiders Nation, we appreciate you. We hope you learned something about the Denver Broncos as we learned a lot about the Las Vegas Raiders from your boy Q, the best in the business, our favorite guy here, the Locked On NFL Network. Thank you so much for tuning into this crossover episode, and thank you for making Locked On Broncos and Locked On Raiders your first listens of the day. Every single day, we'll all see you tomorrow on our shows, respectively, for a brand new episode of the show.